Welcome to Philosophy and Critical Thinking. In today's video, I'll be going through a series of thought experiments concerning abortion and the moral status of the fetus. Given the context of these thought experiments, I will issue a short trigger warning that these uh, thought experiments will cover topics such as miscarriage, infant mortality and abortion. So clearly these topics can be quite distressing to some people. So this is just a uh, warning in advance. Before going into the thought experiments, I'm going to give some background knowledge on the typical views on the moral status of the fetus. Uh, these three typical views were explained by Rosalind Hursthouse. Um, just uh, before that, the moral status of the fetus just means um, what kind of um, moral value do we apply to a uh, fetus in the womb, um, in contrast to other moral statuses we hold to other things, such as animals and human beings and the environment, all those kinds of things. So this is what the uh, three typical views on the moral status of the fetus are. The first one is the conservative view. The conservative view says that the fetus in the womb has the same value, same moral status as an adult human being from the moment of conception. Once the fetus has been conceived in the womb, it, it shares the same uh, moral standing as any other adult human being. The second view is the extreme liberal view. The extreme liberal view is that the, moral, that the moral status of the fetus is the same as any other part of the woman's body until birth. By birth is saying like, you know, once the umbilical cord has been cut, and the, um, you know, the, the baby is no longer a part of the woman's body. So as long as the fetus remains a part of the woman's body, then the moral value of the moral status of the fetus should be seen as, any, as um, equal to any other part of the woman's body. So that's the extreme liberal view. The third view is the mixed strategy. The mixed strategy is that at the moment of conception, right when the fetus has been conceived, it holds the same uh, moral status as any other part of the woman's body. But when it's right before it's about to be born, so right until um, it, the pregnancy is due, um, the, the moral status of the fetus is the same as any other adult human being. So at the end of the pre towards the end of the pregnancy, the fetus holds the same moral status as a adult human being, but at the beginning of the pregnancy, it holds the same moral status as any other part of the woman's body. Rosalind Hursthouse puts forward this thought experiment. A madman has stolen a vial containing a conceived embryo of a human being intended to be placed into a woman for a pregnancy. The madman has also kidnapped a newborn baby. This madman um, in the hospital who's just kidnapped the newborn baby and stolen the vial containing the conceived embryo has uh, climbed up to the uh, roof of the building and he's uh, threatened to drop one of them off a ledge but he's given you the choice of which one to drop. Now, we don't have a way of trying to save them both. Like, let's just say we're too far away and he's already gotten hanged off the ledge. There's um, no way we can uh, save both. So we've got to make a decision and um, ask and, 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 and tell him to drop one of them. Uh, and also, let's just say that this madman has been followed in the news and the police have been following this guy and he's um been doing this in other hospitals before and they're trying to chase this guy down and in the past he has always um gone with um the decision you made he hasn't you know you haven't made that he hasn't uh, asked you to do one decision you've said the other and then he's done the opposite he um he will uh do what you say so uh this is the thought experiment so, Hursthouse asks us, which one would you choose for the man-man to drop? Would it be a dilemma? Would it be a hard decision? Or would it be an easy decision? Once you've thought about your answer for the first thought experiment, Hursthouse puts forward a second thought experiment.
This thought experiment involves two worlds. In world one, somebody has snuck into their roommate's bedroom and they've cut off their hair. They've cut off so much hair that it would take nine months for that hair to grow back. In world two, a person has snuck into their roommate's bedroom who is recently pregnant and administered medication that induces a miscarriage. Hearst House asks us, are the offences committed in each world equally as wrong as each other, or is one more wrong than the other? Is what the person did in World 1 worse than World 2, or is the person what did the person do in World 2 worse than World 1, or are the offences in World 1 and World 2 equally the same? Have a think about the answer to this question. On to Hearst House's third thought experiment. A baby has just been delivered, but is still attached to the umbilical cord and placenta, which is still attached to the mother, thus is still part of the mother's body. Hearst House asks us, does the mother have the right to have it killed? Now, reflect on the answers you gave on those previous three thought experiments. How did you answer and have a think about what your reasons were for answering each of those thought ex the questions to those thought experiments. Once you've thought about that, uh, did your answer um, inform you on whether you are more likely hold the conservative view, the extreme liberal view, or the mixed strategy? Or did the thought experiments have no effect on your view? Moving on to another part of the discussions around the morality and ethics surrounding abortion. Typically, you'll hear terms such as uh, pro-life pro versus pro-choice. In the context here, sometimes you'll have philosophers or just people in general will make defences or arguments for abortion, even when they'll concede that the um, fetus is morally the same as an adult human being. So they'll even they'll either um, accept the conservative view, or they'll just um, you know for the sake of argument just concede that even though they might be a bit sceptical about that, they'll say, look, I'll even give that to you, but I can make arguments defending abortion even if we make that concession. Sometimes you'll hear different versions of defences of abortion based on particular reasons. Some of these reasons will include, of course, not necessarily these are only reasons, there'll be more reasons than this, but typically you'll hear reasons such as a pregnancy due to sexual assault, uh, complications where the mother's life is at risk, uh, pregnancy due to failed contraception. However, there will also be arguments that say, the uh, choice of the mother does not require a specific reason. It can be for any reason at all. So some, many of these um, arguments will be made even when they concede or at least um, uh, are willing to accept that the uh, conservative view of the moral status of the fetus is correct. This next thought experiment is a very famous one in philosophical circles. Um, created by Judith Jarvis Thompson, called The Famous Violinist. In this thought experiment, there's a society that um, follow religiously a uh, famous violinist. They absolutely adore this violinist. But this famous violinist has a very rare disease and will require use of your body for nine months in order to be cured of this disease and be able to um, uh, survive there on after. What has happened is the members of this uh, society that follow this violinist have kidnapped you in your sleep and have connected you intravenously to the famous violinist. Now, the famous violinist has been unaware of this, has, has undergone. Um, they, um, they weren't aware of it either. So whilst you were both asleep, they've kidnapped you, put you in a room next to the famous violinist, and intravenously connected you um, to the famous violinist. 
Now, what's happened here is you've woken up and the doctor has come up and said, you know, yep, so this is all what's happened here. Um, but now that you're connected, um, if you do disconnect yourself, then the um, famous violence will die. It's, um, you know, it's guaranteed to happen. It's set up in such a way that now that we've got this uh, procedure underway, you must remain connected to this famous violinist for the next nine months or the famous violinist is going to die. The question Judith Jarvis Thompson asks us is, are you morally entitled to unplug yourself from the famous violinist? The next thought experiment, also by Thompson, regards a world where there are people seeds. In this world, these seeds float around the sky and they float into houses. When they float into the house, they embed themselves into the carpet and then they'll grow into people. They need to stay in the house in order to survive. That's the environment they need to be in. So you are aware of this. And you own your house, but you don't, you don't want any of these people seeds getting in. You don't want the responsibility of dealing with, um, a person that grows from these people seeds. So you set up on all your windows this mesh to stop the people seeds getting in. However, the mesh on one of the windows is defective and one of the people seeds flows through, embeds itself into your carpet and the people seed has grown into a person in your house and it depends on being in your house in order to survive. The question Thompson asks us here is, are you allowed to remove this person from your house, even though they won't survive? Now it's time to reflect on those last two thought experiments. How did you answer those and why did you answer that way? Um, and also similar to before, did your answers impact on your views regarding specific reasons for having an abortion? Um, did you think the uh, thought experiments um, were analogous or similar to certain reasons for having an abortion? Um, or did the thought experiments, experiments have no effect on your views regarding specific reasons for having an abortion? If you want more thought experiments or more information or more of these videos, uh, you can go onto the website on www.philosophycriticalthinking.com. Uh, on that website, there's a tutorial on arguments from analogy and thought experiments that can be helpful in analysing uh, some of these thought experiments. Um, also, I highly recommend the book Introduction to Philosophical Methods by Chris Daly, which will be in the description below. And... Um, Please subscribe and click the bell if you want more videos. Thanks.